Hey, I'm Charting Man Dan with the Chart Guys. We've got a big red day in the markets to check in on. We've lost the daily uptrend for the first time in three months for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. It was because Abercrombie & Fitch downgraded the U.S. Lots to be looking at on the charts. Let's check in. So we had the Fitch downgrade right after I recorded the video yesterday, of course, but it ended up with a bearish reaction after hours into a couple hours of bounce, bearish overnight into a couple hours of pre-market bounce, and then bearish all day once the bell rang. And you got to think psychologically, we've been in a standpoint where most people have accepted a bull market and have been buying dips, but this was the first fundamental reason that would have people refrain from buying the dips, at least today. And so it was a new unknown thing that happened. Whether or not it's meaningful big picture, that's up for debate. That's your own opinion, but it definitely had an impact. And we lost the daily uptrend for the first time in over three months in the S&P 500. So what happens from here is we now need to look for clues that things are shifting. We have one clue. The bears have one check mark, loss of the daily uptrend. If you look at the S&P 500 futures, we had the, the very volatile candle from Thursday. We then failed the 52 week high and lost support. And we hit the lowest level that we've seen in a couple of weeks of trading. So weekly consolidation is underway. If we're now going to get further bear follow through, we need to see a loss of weekly EMA 12. We've been holding weekly EMA 12 for four months at this point. And so a loss of it would stand out. If we hold it, it's entirely possible that we had to new 52 week highs in a bull flag. We're gonna watch the retracement size. If we lose it, that will be creating the space for the potential of a weekly downtrend. So bears have their initial momentum. How significantly can they keep it? Another thing that I'm watching is the NASDAQ futures chart. Look at this four hour chart and look at the RSI going back again, many months. And we can see that the four hour RSI has not dipped under 30 since February. So five plus months where we bounced right at, right at a whole bunch, just above, just above, right at, right at. And here we are right at. So if we see green tomorrow, the RSI on the four hour is going to be, here we go again, bulls buying the dip. If we follow through with another red day tomorrow, and if this four hour RSI gets oversold, bears want to see things that haven't happened in a long time. Bears want to say, hey, look, the NASDAQ futures four hour RSI just hit the lowest level in seven months. It doesn't mean we wouldn't bounce shortly thereafter, but it would be a sign of bear strength if they're able to pull that off. The NASDAQ lost the daily uptrend, lower high and lower low. So the result of that four hour sideways channel broke bear yesterday. I thought we would get the volatility yesterday. Need a little headline. We got the volatility today. And so again, weekly consolidation underway. Haven't even touched weekly EMA 12 in over three months. So now we watch the retracement size and we watch EMA 12. My simple statement from this point forward is if weekly EMA 12 holds as support, the bulls keep their complete control. Again, we have to lose that as the next check mark. You got to go one time frame at a time. And so if we're going to set a longer term lower high, you know, if, if the S&P 500 is going to set a four month lower high, we need to confirm a weekly downtrend as baby step number one. And that takes a while to play out. We would need to pull back for two, three weeks. We would need to bounce for a week or two. We would need to follow through for a couple of weeks. So it's going to take a while, one time frame at a time. Real quick, we've got another free ebook from the wonderful chart gal Dinsey about exploiting market rotation, beautiful PDF examples and things that you want to be aware of because recognizing market rotation has been key to staying bullish over the last six months. Now we're going to watch to see do we still rotate in this weakness or is money going to leave the market? Check the link in the comments of this video for your free ebook. Hourly downtrend was our guide today. The way I played it, I played it really well, but I didn't go aggressive enough. If I had to change anything, that's what I would have done. And so I started with a pre-market short. And so at that point in time, let's do the setup here. We're right here. What's the most likely scenario on this pre-market bounce? For me, it's an hourly lower high. 
So I know that I want a bearish position before the open because at that point in time, it's 7 a.m. And I know there's two and a half more hours until the open. And in my opinion, the hourly lower high could easily shape up before the open as it did. And I made my entry with real good timing. And the reason for that timing was five minute back burner. Five minute RSI got overbought. Wrong button. Five minute RSI got overbought, so I shorted. And that was at 707. So grab some SQQQ here, looking for the hourly lower high, smaller position in extended hours, a bit more aggressive because I'm grabbing it into strength and the five minute uptrend will be my guide. And so that is pretty much right here. And then it played out really nicely from there. And I was making some other trades, but as far as my main focus, it was that QQQ trade. And then I covered. So where did I cover? First five minute uptrend of the day. So stopped out of SQQQ from pre-market entry. I will re-enter 1236. That's right down here. As soon as this resistance level breaks, I'm out. That's the first five minute uptrend of the entire day. And that's enough for me to say, all right, I want to lock in some profit. The hourly RSI is really beat up. Would not be surprised to see an hourly oversold bounce take place from there. And that did mark the bottom. I was in a mindset of not really looking for bounces because the bears were clearly proving to me they were in control. We lost the daily uptrend for the first time. And so for me, it was today's a little bit different. So don't treat today like the same dip buying from the last three months. I then re-entered the short a little bit early, but wiggle room on the stop kept me in. Come on. Back in SQQQ, stop over the bounce high. That's at 149. And so that was here. So I entered this, this big red candle was enough for me to say, all right, that might be the hourly lower high if it's a bear flag. So made my entry and fortunately the bull break was just barely. And we then didn't confirm the hourly bear flag into the end of the day. The bears made an attempt and they failed. And so then I trimmed my position a bit and I do still have a swing short, just risking profit from the day uh, in case we do see some bear follow through. Because again, today for me, was the most significant bear day for the NASDAQ. Well, we had one other in there, but it's the first significant bear day in a while, a gap down and a dump to go along with it. And really that's the only other comparable day in the last few months. So it's now happened twice in two weeks. Can we follow through is the big question. Bears brought the volume. We did not see all major sectors hit the low of the day at the same time. That's one thing that was missing from this being a, a high fear environment. But the VIX did spike regardless of that because, again, it's a, a news headline. And if the VIX closes over weekly EMA 12, it will be the first time that happens in four months, keeping an eye on that as well. So I'm now more cautious as a bull. I am much more open to bear trades, including bear swing trades. And we're going to watch for weekly higher lows, but... Now it's just a question of how long can bears maintain daily downtrends. Semiconductors, rising wedge bear break. I forgot I drew that. But still holding the daily support where NVDA lost it. So 152.29 key support level that must break for the bears to start to gain control in SMH and NVDA did confirm the daily downtrend. So I thought yesterday would be a volatile day when these little itty bitty tight days broke but it was one extra day. And so daily downtrend confirmed, weekly consolidation underway. Anything above 401 is a higher low. We're still 10% above weekly support and we have weekly EMA 12, which has not been tested in many, many months. But you look at the monthly chart for NVDA and we can say that the next time we see monthly consolidation, it's not gonna surprise us in the slightest. We just had a monthly stair step pattern for 10 months in a row, nine months in a row. So again, open, prove it bears, you got my attention today. Now follow through and keep my attention for the next couple of weeks. Hourly downtrends are our guides. Many names daily downtrends are our guides. I'm watching for Netflix to potentially shape up a weekly downtrend. If Netflix confirms this weekly head and shoulders, 
it'll be the first indication of a longer term four month lower high being set. And for me, a four month lower high is absolutely the most likely scenario after the size of that drop. So again, just open to the bear side now. You got my attention. Healthcare held on well today, pretty much a non-event day, but it wasn't dropping. We're gonna look for an XLV weekly higher low. Anything above 128.93. And just watching the bears in control of the short term for now. And the financial sector broke recent support. Its weekly consolidation is now underway. But again, tons of space for the weekly higher low. So it's entirely possible, right? I just went through all these bear scenarios. It's entirely possible that we consolidate for two weeks, hold weekly EMA 12 on a bunch of major names, and then see continuation. So we're going to watch for clues every single day to help us with probabilities. What's the volume? Do we see rotation? Do we see fear and money leaving the market with all major sectors dropping together? That's really the, the main thing. Aside from losing weekly EMA 12, the main thing bears need to see is a couple days of all major sectors dropping together to show money leaving the market and not just rotating around. IWM still struggling at this long-term 198 double top, 198, 199, but still a daily uptrend. Bears need to take out 193.18 to lose the daily uptrend and have that be a more convincing rejection from that longer term resistance. ARKK, remember when I stopped out and said, eh, no biggie, not gonna rush back into a bull position, gonna take a step back, reassess. Well, here we are back down to where that level was. Daily downtrend confirmed, weekly consolidation underway. I didn't know that was going to happen, but I knew to be patient and not just, just FOMO back in after being stopped out right before a pretty big bounce. So ARKK, do bears follow through with this new low? Weak bounce. Weekly EMA 12. Chinese names now getting a more significant pullback, and this is opening the door for the next bounce. Bears potentially shaping up a, a downtrend. FXI, big pullback, a lot of space for a daily lower high. So got to be keeping an eye out for that. Aggressive bears are going to look to try and short those daily lower highs. And if we do not see a significant recovery, I will definitely size down my Chinese exposure heading into earnings next week. Baba has earnings August 10th, I believe. I'll have to double check that date because trading view is sometimes wrong. XPEV, trying to hold daily EMA 12. Had a pretty decent bounce on the morning, but we must confirm an hourly uptrend for the daily higher low to shape up. So again, we can look at a chart like this and we know a daily higher low is very likely. It's just a question of where using the hourly downtrend as our guide. And then we know a daily lower high is most likely. So we know the most likely scenario and we just have to zoom in and on a daily basis, look for clues on the hourly chart that show us those two scenarios are shaping up. NIO held on very well. Look at that dip buying. Gap down dip buying on NIO. Bulls will have to confirm the hourly uptrend, but no red flags on this daily chart. If you look at that chart on its own, you have no idea that it was a big pullback day in the markets. AI names, AI did it again. You know, I talked yesterday, well, we got our strong close now, obviously the headline changing things. Talked about the strong close because every bull break, pull back, bull break, pull back, bull break, pull back. Thought, to, thought from yesterday that it could be different this time. And nope, same thing. Still a daily uptrend with 37.76 support, but bull breaks with no follow through has been the pattern. PLTR finally started daily consolidation. Decent bounce there. Bulls have to shape up the hourly trend change for a daily higher low. So we can be looking for daily higher lows in XPEV, NIO, PLTR, but the bulls have to prove it on the hourly. And so those are the places to look if the NASDAQ recovers from here. If the NASDAQ four hour RSI doesn't get oversold and we do see another bounce from that 30 to 33 range that we just looked at on that futures chart, then these are the names that are positioned well to benefit from that. 
if we continue to see further weakness, Tesla is a lead bear, having just confirmed a bear break of its sideways range. Did Meta break bear? Did I miss that? I did. Too many things going on. That break at the low yesterday, meh, 1% of follow through, but it was still pretty nice. Four hour equilibrium bear break. So now we're looking for a, a meta daily higher low. But Tesla broke bear as well. Tesla's at the lowest level in almost a month. So the daily lower high pattern is our guide on Tesla. Weekly support is 240 coming into play. We'll have to be watching for a potential weekly head and shoulders on Tesla next bounce. So the size of the weekly pullback is important because it either leads to continuation or it creates the space for the weekly lower high. And again, that's why I'm watching Netflix. If we continue to stay weak in the markets, I'm looking for Netflix to confirm a weekly downtrend. So again, pick out some bull names, pick out some bear names, and then watch what the broader market is doing on whatever time frame is most important to you to help dictate which group you look towards trades. Riot had a strong start to the morning, lots of relative strength, and then we double topped by one penny at daily resistance and rolled over into a good bit of weakness. Big dump from that level. We had a five minute bull flag confirmed with no follow through and then a big drop. Still trying for a weekly bull flag, but obviously not a productive day for bulls. The dollar is still strong. Four hour uptrend, EMA 12, no sign of the weekly lower high. And with that, the metals are still weak. Gold dropping to a lower low, no sign of the weekly higher low. Silver joining with the bear break and the miners continue to drop in a big way. And boy, am I glad I stopped out at NUGT yesterday. From the high of Monday, NUGT just collapsed. That is a 15% drop in two days. And here we are testing the low. So out of those three, I would say miners are the weakest. Gold is in the middle. Silver is slightly stronger. But again, these, these metals and miners cannot go anywhere if the dollar is up at the highs of its bounce. Oil finally broke the stair step pattern bearish into daily consolidation. We know EMA 12 is the first thing to be watching. Testing it now, bulls would have to confirm a four hour uptrend if we were gonna have any confidence that that daily EMA 12 can hold. And we don't even have a four hour bounce underway just yet. But lots of space for a daily high or low. It's just a question of how much retracement do we see before it is set. And natural gas still weak. Bear red flag for the bulls was back here when we lost daily EMA 12. I guess it was here. Close under daily EMA 12. And then we confirmed a little bear flag. And here we are hitting fresh lows of consolidation. We needed this to be a daily bull flag to try and shape up the weekly bull flag. Instead, further weekly consolidation. Same thing as the metals. Dollar is probably having an impact here as well. Although it is less of an inverse correlation with natural gas than it is with the metals, we know in general, dollar and commodities are inverse. And we got a strong dollar over the last three weeks. So that's where we stand. Keep an eye on TLRY, trying for a short squeeze. Tested a double top at resistance. Bears played defense, but again, there's a ton of shorts in this name. And if we were able to bull flag here, that would be impressive, especially on a day like today. Bulls did their best, but ended up rejecting. Still watching CMPS weekly time frame for its equilibrium to eventually break sometime within the next probably four to eight weeks. Again, choose some bull names you're going to focus on and some bear names you're going to focus on and then look for the clues in the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ to determine which direction you're going to be looking. The bears have one check. They've got a whole list. They prove something on the daily. They need all major sectors at lows. They need increasing bear volume. They need loss of weekly EMA 12 if they're going to keep proving things to us this month. I appreciate you watching. Do good things.